It's a strange dog. Okay, well, with that, we uh, wrap up our first look at five, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> Stay tuned. The Channel 4 News at 5.30 is up next. Thursday. From Fort Lauderdale and Miami, this is Channel 4 News at 5.30 with Steve Abrams in Fort Lauderdale. Teresa Rodriguez in Miami, meteorologist Brian Norcross in the Storm Center, Tony Segreto Sports, and the Channel 4 News Team. Good evening from Fort Lauderdale. And good evening from Miami. I'm Ed Odell sitting in for Teresa Rodriguez, who's filling in on NBC News at sunrise all this week. Looking at the top stories in this half hour of the Channel 4 News, Congress and President Bush square off on civil rights. We'll have a live report. Plus, a convicted sex killer fights for his life in a Fort Lauderdale courtroom. And the miracle birth of a deer, born quite literally by accident. Now our top story, controversy over civil rights legislation now under consideration in Congress. Channel 4's Steve Handelsman joins us now to sort out the battle. And here at the U.S. Capitol, at the House of Representatives, they are still debating at this hour. And if they vote at all tonight, it won't be for a couple of hours. There is no question that the Democrats' version of a civil rights bill will pass. The question is by how much. Democrats need 290 votes to make their bill absolutely veto-proof. But by most counts here this afternoon, they don't have them. Before debate began, House Democrats knew their plan to protect their bill from a Bush veto was in trouble. Their leader, Tom Foley, all but conceded they were falling short. Well, this is the beginning of the process, not the end. Foley is frustrated by White House tactics. President Bush cannot get his own bill passed, but he's weakened support for the Democrats' version by insisting it would lead to employment quotas. Democrats are furious. The politics of division, the politics of race, the politics of fear. Democrats deny their bill would make it so much easier to win big cash awards and suits over racism that employers would have to hire by quotas in self-defense. This is not a quota bill. It specifically outlaws quotas. Debate was angry. Many members looking ahead to how the issue could help or hurt them in the 92 elections. It's the first time in the civil rights era that an administration has tried to divide Americans on the basis of race in order to score points in a political campaign. In the end, when its complexities are understood at the employment offices of countless factories and businesses, it will not have the support of the American people but their resentment and their indignation. Even before the House vote, moderate Republican senators proposed a compromise plan. And Democrats here on the House side hope that even if they fall short in the vote here, that once a compromise bill is pounded out and passes the Senate, that there will be enough votes to make the Democrats' civil rights bill veto-proof. Reporting live from the U.S. Capitol, this is Steve Handelsman, Channel 4 News. Ed? Thanks, Steve Handelsman, reporting live from Washington. A convicted killer who Broward prosecutors call a career criminal has been spared from the electric chair. Instead, 29-year-old Roland Menzies has been sentenced to life in prison. Roland Menzies has a long history of violent crime. At 13 years of age, he was convicted of manslaughter and the beating death of a four-year-old Davy boy. After that came a series of convictions Kern on everything from drugs to burglary. And then in December of 1989, Menzies met 49-year-old Richard Kern Kubik at a West Broward adult bookstore. They left together, and while they were having sex, Kubik was killed as a result of eight stab wounds to the neck. For that, Menzies will spend at least the next 25 years in prison. The court judges, uh, judges you, Mr. Menzies, that you are guilty of the crime of first-degree murder. It's a sentence of this court that you be committed to the Department of Corrections for your natural life without possibility of parole for 25 calendar years. Menzies and his family were visibly relieved at the news that he won't be going to Florida's electric chair. It took the jury just four hours to decide his fate and only minutes for the judge to accept its recommendation. Attorneys for Menzies claim through the trial their client was only protecting himself, that he was just trying to defend himself when Kubik began choking him. Prosecutors, however, said it had nothing to do with self-defense. They said it was a clear case of premeditated murder. A South Dade man arrested on prostitution charges after posing as a patient who wanted a physical examination. Police say a Howard Harlan called a doctor to his house. While she examined him, he masturbated, then offered the doctor money if she'd visit him again. The doctor called police, who sent an officer posing as a physician. Authorities say the same thing happened again. Harlan's charged with offering to commit prostitution. 
A student and a teacher's aide exchanged gunfire at an adult education class in Daytona Beach. Both pulled guns after fighting over a can of soda. Student John Harris apparently became enraged when teacher's aide Kevin McCreary took away his soda. Harris is in serious condition. McCreary was treated for an abdomen wound. An eighth grader in Syracuse, New York, was suspended after school officials found drugs in his locker. But reporter Jim Axelrod tells us you may be surprised to hear what drug was found. Jason Monto is home from school today with his channel changer in hand, serving out his three-day suspension. Jason is an eighth grader at the Lincourt School, where he was caught with Nuprint, a common pain reliever, something plainly forbidden in the school handbook. Did you know it was against school rules? Yeah, partly. But I didn't think that... It would, they would go this far with the, what they do to me. Jason Monto's father can't believe how far they've gone. The suspension, plus Jason is barred from next weekend's class trip to Niagara Falls. Too stiff, says James Monto, for a kid who's never been big trouble. Average kid in school with average problems. Never anything serious. On page 17 of the Lincourt Handbook, the penalty for having something like Newprint is spelled out. It's considered a drug. Page 17 also lists the penalties for stealing and carrying a dangerous weapon, and both are lighter. Suspensions for less time on the second offense. Does that seem right? That's a question I wanted to ask Dr. Gloria Birmingham. She's the principal here and the district superintendent. But she wouldn't talk to me, except to say discipline cases are confidential and not discussed. So no explanation of the policy. No chance to find out if she thinks the punishment fits the crime. And no chance to ask Dr. Birmingham what she thinks this is going to make Jason Monto feel like about coming back to school here. I don't feel like going back and then having people thinking like I had drugs in my locker. And then... James Monto will be at the next Lincourt School Board meeting Tuesday night to complain about the three days of TV time he'd prefer his kid didn't have. That was Jim Axelrod reporting from Syracuse. A fight is brewing over NASA's planned space station, Freedom. Administration officials warned today that killing the project would place the entire space program in, quote, great jeopardy. Yesterday, the House Appropriations Committee deleted the $2 billion earmarked for the space station from next year's budget. Space station supporters will try to get funding restored when the issue is debated on the House floor Thursday. Another possible glitch could delay the launch of the space shuttle Columbia for yet a third time. It was supposed to go up tomorrow until engineers found loose insulation on the shuttle's external fuel tank. Workers glued down the pieces and they say they think everything's okay now, unless there's another part problem. And if the weather holds out, the shuttle should be ready to go tomorrow morning. It's going to cost you more to get to Disney World this summer, but it's not the theme park that's raising its prices. Highway officials are raising the tolls again on the Florida Turnpike. The penny a mile increase takes effect July 1st and is expected to generate more than $8 million this year. In Earth News tonight, a big controversy over boats that take a toll on South Florida's manatee population. Many boaters are mad about new speed limits in Biscayne Bay. Environmental reporter Nick Bogert is at the Metro Commission right now where all this is being fought out. Nick? Steve, a decision just a couple of minutes ago, and in fact those boating interests are still mad, and those who would protect the manatee, the environmental forces, are quite happy with what happened here. The two sides have been waiting for hours here at the county commission to express their views, the manatees versus the men at sea, and the big question, is Biscayne Bay big enough for both of them? Boats and manatees meet each other a lot in South Florida waters, and it's one reason why manatees are an endangered species. Ninety-five percent of the manatees that we have studied do have uh, some sort of uh, scars or some sort of, uh, they've had collisions with boats. The county studies manatee movements all the time and used its info to draw up a new protection plan. There are a few no-wake zones to protect manatees now. They're the little white patches on this map. But the new county plan would add slow zones throughout Biscayne Bay, top speed just eight miles an hour, and a no-boating-at-all zone near Virginia Key. Boaters are all revved up in opposition to that plan. There would be no recreational boating as we know it today in North Biscayne Bay. Uh, they're telling me uh, I can't go fast in the bay and, and speed is in my blood. Boaters argued the county plan would pretty much wipe out water skiing and would make bay travel times impossibly slow. But environmental groups argued that with only 1,500 manatees left in all Florida, they need all the help they can get. 
There are some of us who, who do not boat, who instead look as the bay as a marine park, and we enjoy the wildlife that lives there and knowing that they are protected. Some boaters pitched a compromise. Looser regulations in summer when most boaters are out, and tighter rules in the winter when sea cows need the most help. The fact of the matter is that the manatees are winter residents like the tourists are. But just a few moments ago, the County Commission rejected that idea of some sort of seasonal compromise, went ahead with the very tough manatee protection plan. A lot of the boaters are not pleased. They will have one more forum. The governor and cabinet have to consider all this, either in July or September. But so far, Stephen Ed, the cabinet has been very tough on these manatee protection rules in other counties. So maybe not much hope for the boaters there. Back to you. Yeah, Nick, uh, bad news for the boaters, obviously. Are you still with me, Nick? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, another, another option they were, they were looking at apparently had to do with setting up a private sanctuary for the manatees. Was that given any serious consideration? Here. No, the manatees really are all over uh, the Biscayne Bay, and there's really no way you can segregate them other than, I suppose, fencing off, but that really would not be allowable under Endangered Species Protection Acts. Also, earlier this week, we heard some boaters talk about the fact that people from Fort Lauderdale like to bring their boats down south because you can go fast down there. I guess that's all over. Yeah, the wide open bay. Well, it will be if the cabinet uh, approves these rules, and, and Broward County is going to have some new manatee rules that the cabinet will take up later on, uh, later on this year. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much, Nick. Still to come tonight, a gift for Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. She is being presented with the house she already owns, and we'll explain in a minute. Plus, the miraculous birth of a baby deer thrown from her mother in a car accident. And at six, nuclear experts consider the safety of Cuba's nuclear power industry. I'm finally eating a hero, thanks to Super Polygrip, with its new Ultra Hole formula. Now holds dentures ultra tight, stronger and longer than ever. New Ultra Hold Formula, the best grip Polygrip has ever made. What's different about Polydent? Mmm, <sighs> refreshing mint. There's a minty mouthwash ingredient in every tablet. Other cleansers may get dentures clean, but Polydent gets the minty fresh clean. Super strength, super minty, Polydent. As cars get older, they may need higher and higher octane to perform like they used to. But there is a gasoline specially formulated to control this higher octane need while providing the highest level of engine cleanliness. Texaco System You'll get great performance in every octane grade. Still think all gasolines are the same? You take so much care to eat foods that are natural. Consider that the next time you drink decaffeinated coffee. Sanka is decaffeinated by a remarkable natural process, using only pure water and nature's effervescence to wash away caffeine. With no artificial chemicals. That's why it's natural to drink Sanka. Sanka ground decaffeinated coffee. Domino's Pizza delivers in 30 minutes or less. None of the rest are always this hot, this fresh. Call Domino's tonight for this hot deal. A medium with all the toppings you want, just $8.99. Another one, only $4 more. So call Domino's Pizza now. JCPenney Summer Sale for ladies only. Save 25 to 40% on all swimwear, French Navy casual separates, junior shorts, and knit tops at JCPenney. <laughs> Mama's little girl is all grown up, and she's a porno star. She has some excellent acting talent. This mom even paid for her daughter's breast implants, hoping they would give her career a rise. That's my baby. A Current Affair, weekdays at 7, following NBC Nightly News, only on Channel 4. Win two free tickets to Whitney Houston's I'm Your Baby Tonight concert. Just watch Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. If you correctly name the video, you could win. Brought to you by these sponsors. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. South Florida's leading environmentalist, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, is getting a present from the state, the house she already owns. The Land Trust of Dade County is going to buy the Coconut Grove home and preserve it. Then they'll return it to the 101-year-old Douglas as a gift. A baby loggerhead turtle was stolen overnight from the Rosenstill School on Virginia Key. The kidnappers apparently broke into the pen where turtles are kept and took the two-year-old loggerhead, which was born and raised at the school. Steve? 
And by the way, for any kids out there who would like an up-close look at sea turtles, this is your chance. The Discovery Center of Fort Lauderdale is organizing Moonlight Turtle Walks beginning tonight. It is a three-month program to teach kids all about sea turtles. It could be at least another day or so before swimmers are allowed back in the intracoastal waterway between Riviera Beach and Boynton Beach. Officials say at least 30,000 gallons of sewage was released into the water from a broken pipe near Mar-a-Lago yesterday. The leak has been stopped, but possible health risks remain. In neighborhood news, an update on a story Channel 4 told you about last week. Coral Springs High students will ask City Commissioner Donald Sanders to resign at tonight's meeting. Sanders was arrested during the Memorial Day weekend for driving under the influence. Students say he sets a poor example. And at the moment we are, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to a break, I guess, are we? All right, we'll be back after this. This weight loss program offers a solution you can live with, total flexibility and savings. I love it, and I feel great. I lost 56 pounds eating three good meals a day. I could eat at restaurants, even fast food outlets. I like the flexibility. I even saved money. I lost weight, but my grocery bill stayed the same. Lose all the weight you can with a low service fee. Only $11 a week at Doctors Weight Loss Centers. Call 1-800-940-SLIM. One radio station really is different. South Florida's Coast, 97.3 FM. Only the best of the 70s, 80s, and today. All in 25-minute sets and no talking over the music, ever. No contests, no silly DJ chatter, and Coast always tells you the songs they play. Turn on South Florida's Coast, 97.3 FM. You'll love the difference. Want air on Ford Mustang or Ranger at no extra charge? Don't sweat it. You've got it during your South Florida Ford Dealers Spring Savings Celebration. Out to get a real steal on a sporty Mustang or Ranger loaded with value. Don't sweat it. You've got it. Right now, Mustang sticker price minus customer cash is $10,377. And you can save over $3,100 on Ranger, both with air at no extra charge. That's right, air at no extra charge. Your choice. It's a limited time offer you won't want to miss. See your South Florida Ford Dealers and don't sweat it. KFC introduces a whole new kind of fried chicken. New Light and Crispy. Give me, give me, all, give me, give me, give me no skin, give me all taste. New Light and Crispy from KFC. No skin, so it's light. All taste because it's marinated with 11 herbs and spices. Nobody's cooking like KFC. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Drop into KFC right now, and you can feed a lot of people for a little money. Get 12 pieces of delicious new Light and Crispy chicken for just $9.99 plus tax. J.C. Penney's semi-annual lingerie sale. Save 25% on all nice and spicy Fantasia, Adana, Underscore, and Body Lights, bras, briefs, and bikinis at J.C. Penney. From your 24-hour news source, Channel 4 News continues. And time now to check in with Channel 4's weather dude, Brian Allen, who is standing by. Brian, uh, we have some, some fantastic storm cells moving through uh, Fort Lauderdale tonight. About half an hour ago, a storm moved through and just dropped sheets of rainfall. What's it like down there? Sheets of rain. Okay, sheets well, of rain. what we're talking about right now is for Fort Lauderdale. Until 6 o'clock tonight, there's a severe thunderstorm warning for the northeastern corner of Broward County. And there's also a, a marine advisory for the lower and middle keys until 6 o'clock as well. Just some heavy downpours through there. Let's go ahead and take a look outside right now and show you what's going on as far as the numbers go. Currently in Fort Lauderdale, 94 degrees, humidity 44%, winds out of the southwest at 12. Miami International, 93 degrees, humidity at 44%, winds out of the south at 5. As far as air quality for today, Broward 45 and good. And then we've got Dade, good at 31. Let's go ahead and check in with our neighborhood weather watchers right now. Here you go, Deerfield Island, 82 degrees, cloudy now. Sunrise earlier, 95, it's only 80 there now. And Stephanie, our weather watcher, says it's pouring. Hollywood bacon up there, 94 degrees. Now then, as far as what's going on in Dade County, Miami Springs, 91, a trace earlier. Cutler Ridge, 95, really hot. 86 degrees, a few clouds around Fruit and Spice Park. And for the Keys, Key Largo, 88 degrees and sunny. Alamorada, 90 with some blue skies. And Key West, dark out west, 85. That's because we had some thunderstorms start to move through. We're taking the radar shot now for you out of Miami. You can just see right here a little bit of yellow right there in the T for Fort Lauderdale. That's what's left of the cell. It's moving to the east. Basically, we're talking about Lauderdale, also Pompano Beach, Deerfield Beach, and then back down to about Port Everglades. We see some more right there around Palm Beach County. The 
Keys right here is let up a little bit. We don't see any of the yellow or orange in there, but this is where the marine advisory is. A couple of water spouts spouted through there. Now then, as far as the satellite loop, we can watch all this happen for us. As we start to roll this, see everything starting to blow up, but still around the coast, they're on the eastern coast, they're still seeing some pretty good thunderstorms develop. And once again, some pretty good thunderstorms way out here in the Gulf, but doing nothing. And you can just see that moisture start to move on up with those southerly and southwest winds. Now then, as far as our forecast goes in detail, here it is for the boaters tomorrow. Winds out of the west to southwest, 5, 15 to 20 actually. Seas two feet near shore, and as you move out into the Gulf Stream, about six feet. Bay is a moderate shot. The surf temperature down a couple of degrees to 81. For tonight, some passing showers, a low of 75. Tomorrow, some sunshine once again. More thunderstorms expected, a high of 91 degrees. And your four more days, thunderstorms all the way through the period, 90, 89, 89, and 91. So it's still going to be warm and humid, which breeds thunderstorms. Steve? It's only, it's only Tuesday and you're wrecking our weekend. I'm sorry. I know you got big boating plans, but <laughs> I'm going to get you this you're, time. You're coming along on that, aren't you? Uh, I, to, I don't think so. To reef sweep? You're not going to do uh, that? I don't think. I've got to work on Saturday. Otherwise, I'd the, be out there with you. I'll get you the time off. Okay, thanks. We'll, we'll talk to you. All right, so it's raining under the tea in Fort Lauderdale right now. That's right. You betcha. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Ed? Updating top stories in the Channel 4 News tonight. The Lost Squadron is still not found. Explorers say the planes discovered off Fort Lauderdale are not the Avengers that disappeared in 1945. Japan's Mount Unzu still spewing ash and red-hot lava. 32 people have been killed, hundreds are seeking shelter. And members of the American Nuclear Society react to two Cuban defectors who say a reactor under construction in Cienfuegos, Cuba, isn't safe. Details on this story coming up on the Channel 4 News at 6. Well, now it's time for sports, and Tony Segretto's back. Looks like we got some problems back there at linebacker at the Dolphin camp, huh? Yeah, we're going to talk about who's going to fill that slot next to John Offerdahl. But before we get to that, Ed, let me tell you, there was another injury at the Dolphins' mini camp today. Number one draft pick Randall Hill went down with an injured hamstring. We'll have much more on this at 6 o'clock. Now about that linebacker situation. Certainly one of the big questions this year is who will line up next to John Offerdahl. In the past, names like Jackie Ship, remember that name? Cliff Odom last year, Barry Krause the year before that. Who will it be this year? Well, Ned Smith has a list of candidates. Ned? It's still early, but already you can see competition is heating up at one inside linebacker position. Five-time Pro Bowler John Offerdahl is a lock at one spot, but any one of five other players could start beside him this season. You know, I think linebacking and inside linebacking has been pretty... Uh pretty much the strength of our team and defensive team the last couple of years so whenever you get new guys in here trying to make the team it just adds that much more competition john grimsley who the dolphins acquired from houston in a trade is trying to find a new home with the dolphins starting unit it's a real learning process right now for me trying to uh, learn all the different plays and all the different uh, terminology and you know it's it's coming along knee injuries have slowed the progress of both barry kraus and plan b acquisition ned bokar but both plan to be in the hunt these guys here uh they've always been good and they're going to be consistently good my job is to play a little bit better and with youth on my side hopefully that pays off in the long run all these linebackers know the competition is already fierce and it'll pick up even more so when cliff odom comes off his injury actually it is nice to have one person that you know you're going to be playing with but at this time of the year you know you want to get comfortable with all the players with competition only making everyone better naming a starter will probably not be done until well into the preseason schedule in miami ned smith channel 4 sports I'll tell you one thing the dolphin coaches are really really impressed with john grimsley all right let's switch gears just a little bit two dollars won't buy you much these days as you well know oh i think you can still get a big mac and fries uh, right i think so right steve my photographer steve you can get big mac and fries for two bucks right i think you can get a slice of pizza you can rent a movie for two dollars but i'll tell you what in detroit two bucks will even buy you a baseball stadium no kidding David Mahalov, I'm the one that bought Tiger Stadium for $2. Oh, yeah? Well, you gonna be my boss? Yeah! <laughs> Hard to believe, but David Mahalab owns Tiger Stadium. Well, he sent the city a check last week for two bucks, and the city cashed it. Seems like a match made in heaven, doesn't it? Should the stadium be called Mahalab Field? The Tigers think not. Now, I wonder how much the Orange Bowl would sell for. Certainly more than two dollars, but you don't really believe that Mr. Mahalab owns Tiger Stadium, do you? Or do you? Ed and Steve, back to you. <laughs> you said he does. It must be true. <laughs> Still to come, an amazing story of survival. A baby deer born after being thrown from her mother's womb.
This morning, as guests at the five-star Arizona Biltmore are tempted to breakfast, the fine brewed coffee usually served has been secretly switched to Folgers Crystals. Does it have the fresh brewed taste and aroma these guests expect? They were just sort of waft me out of bed. It tastes like fresh ground beans. It'll help wake us up. Get us better. going. It's Folgers Crystals. Coffee drawing. I would have thought it was brewed. Is the word elegant? Can that be used for coffee? Mountain-grown Folgers Crystals. Coffee rich enough to be served in America's finest restaurants. I'll drink to that. Chris Everett discusses her weakness. It's not tennis. It's eating. I love rich, creamy foods. But now this isn't a weakness. It's healthy eating, thanks to Kraft. Kraft introduces Eating Right frozen entrees. Rich, creamy recipes now lower in fat, cholesterol, sodium, and calories. Weakness? Not anymore. New Kraft Eating Right entrees. Kraft makes eating right. Delicious. Introducing the Pizza Hut Early Bird. Not just pizza. Six Super Early Bird Meals. Six Super Early Bird Deals. A Supreme Sandwich. Ham and Cheese Sandwich. Spaghetti and Meat Sauce. All-You-Can-Eat Salad Bar. A Choice of Pizza Dinners. All served with drinks from 2 to 5. It's Broadway's biggest show ever. The Tony Award-winning best musical, Jerome Robbins Broadway. New York, New York, a hell of a time. The one that gives you nine hit shows for one hot ticket. Jerome Robbins Broadway. There'll never be anything like it again. The final week. Call Ticketmaster now. When you're buying or selling real estate, make sure you enter the world of buy owner. I sold my home in less than six weeks, got the price I wanted, and saved over $6,000. Thanks, buy owner. They do make a difference.